Not the biggest turnout. I'd hope for a bit more. Uh, later, we're having a guest lecture from, uh, from directly from California, which I think will be really interesting to you because, uh, well, it's a, it's a heavyweight uh, talking to us from abroad. Uh, so it'll definitely be something that's, uh, that, that you'll be needing. So today I'll be doing the lecture and we'll be talking about uh, customer research, the market and forecasting. And this is not necessarily something that uh, uh, an engineer usually uh, you know, uh, worries about in his uh, daily workings. So uh, that's why it's all the more important and it's especially important to this course. So this is uh, the agenda for today. Uh, we'll be starting out with a short lecture by me. Uh, we'll have a break. We'll try to set up all the technical stuff for Tobias to lecture from uh, California. Uh, yes, there's a question. Uh, is it possible we have a little bit of light in here? Sure. Yeah. It's, really <laughs> it's a bit too early for, uh, for, for lighting conditions like this, apparently. Okay, sure. Uh, after that, I'll be talking about uh, the value proposition and the market description. And uh, finally, we'll be talking about uh, forecasting. And uh, just to give you a, a quick uh, idea of why it is we're actually talking about this, um, what will happen eventually in this course is that you'll sit in front of a guy like this. And uh, he'll be wanting you to answer a few different questions. And uh, it turns out those questions aren't about the technology. They're about, well, pretty much anything else. So he'll be saying, uh, he'll be asking, is there a need for your product? And you'll have to have a good uh, line of uh, arguments for, uh, for establishing that need. Uh, he'll uh, ask or he'll try to see if there, you are in a unique um, position to address this need. Um, so you'll have to think about that as well. He'll want to know. Uh, that you know where to start and you know how to spend the money. Of course, he'll want to know that because he doesn't want to invest too much, he doesn't want to invest too little. Um, and also, he'll probably also want to know that uh, you'll, be start, you'll start making money quite soon. Um, and of course, uh, and uh, at some point during the not so uh, distant future, five years or so, he'll be uh, getting his uh, investment back tenfold or something like that. That's not, that sounds unreal, uh, maybe that sounds unrealistic, but uh, that's, uh, that's the reality of it. If you want investment at this point in your company's maturity, expect that the investor wants their money back tenfold uh, within, uh, well, at the most five years. So um, if that's all in order, I can pretty much uh, tell you you've, uh, you've sold your idea, so uh, don't worry about that. So my, my point with this is essentially, you may have noticed that it, it doesn't mention technology, it doesn't mention uh, uh, design details, things like that too much. It mentions all kinds of things related to the customer and the market and uh, how you're going to uh, attack this market and how you're going to uh, establish sales in such a market. So um, let's start at the beginning, knowing what your customer actually wants, what your customer needs. Um, Customers tend to, uh, well, you could group them into two different categories uh, depending on what kind of market we're dealing with. Uh, well, the first market is uh, a mature market. A mature market is characterized by, well, let's say uh, people here are working with, for instance, uh, the diabetes industry. Uh, there you have some big companies who've been in the business for quite some time. They have their own established ideas of how stuff works, how the customer thinks. And they tend to be very, you know, there's bound to be some kind of a consensus about that knowledge of the customer and that idea of the customer. And that has some pros and cons to it. So on the one hand, it's easy to get an overview. And it's an easy basis for underlining if you have something that's different because you have something to compare it to. Uh, on the other side, it's, uh, it's hard to compete just on small innovations. So you kind of have to have like this big innovative product, this new disruptive innovation for this to work in a market like that. And also, um, uh, lastly, it's, uh, it's not uh, very easy to be the first mover in a market like this. Uh, you're bound to, if, if, let's just say for instance, we're in the diabetes uh, industry and you do a new product. 
you have huge companies with huge amounts of money who could just copy you the day after. So there's what you would call a second mover advantage, whereas a first mover advantage is the advantage to the one first uh, moving into a market. So uh, that's something to be aware about for uh, the, uh, the mature market. Oh, sorry, let's just stay with that. Um, most of you will be looking at new markets. I, th I would actually go as far as to say all of you will be looking at completely new markets or at least uh, reframing uh, an existing market. Um, and, uh, and that has some, uh, some pros and cons to it as well. Um, well, first of all, it's very hard, as I'm sure you've already established, to uh, find out where to get your info because it doesn't tend to be like one single type of customer, one single place to go and get info about this particular customer. Um, but of, of course, uh, there's also the potential for finding you know, big unaddressed needs. And that's essentially what this whole course is about, finding these needs and making a product and a business that addresses them. So um, linking it to what I said before, well, if there's no one in the market, there's, it's unlikely that there's a big player interested in uh, addressing this market. So, well, not at this point at least. Uh, so you have the first mover advantage. You can actually go into the market and you have some time for establishing yourself and uh, fortifying your product before someone else thinks, okay, this may be a good idea, so I want to go into this market as well. So the other problem is, of course, uh, on the con side, is that uh, it's bound to be complex because you don't have these categories, you don't have these established uh, customer groups and, uh, and uh, segments. So you'll probably have to make that up for yourself. That's also a very interesting exercise, so uh, don't be deterred by that. So a lot of complexity also. And of course, the last thing is that whenever you want to sell, track record is key. The customer will be asking, so who else has bought this? Is it working? How many hours has it been working? How is it working? Is, it, uh, uh, is my service guaranteed? Things like that. So a track record is really, really important. And also, at the same time, you're probably thinking about one particular customer that's going to buy your product. But that's not the case, I can tell you. The case is probably that you'll have several different customers who'll be interested in your product. Well, should be interested in your product at least. Because you have one guy who uses it, and that's probably the one you're thinking about, who'll be using my product. But then also there's the guy, the girl who approves it. Who's that? You should start thinking about that as well. And also, who purchases it? It purchases it. This is a, a typical, typical characteristic for, for high-tech products when you sell to another business because they usually have a, a purchase or a um, procurement department where they actually do the purchases. And finally, this one is good. Who sees the vision? Because if you can, for instance, on a strategic level of the company, uh, find someone who really has a fire for your idea and has an understanding of what the, the basic idea is, then maybe this person will be able to drive your idea, your concept, your product um, into the business without it actually making sense on the other areas. So uh, these people you need to identify. And actually to, uh, well, of course, there may be others. I'm sure there is actually. So that's something one has to think about. Um, Let's just uh, introduce uh, Company X here um, because uh, it turns out that these different people are usually also at different levels or at different parts of the organization. As I just mentioned, the procurement department is one of the parts. Um, you'll probably have on the operational level, you'll have uh, someone saying it needs to be more ergonomic, something that's linked to the use of the product itself. That makes sense. Uh, so on the intermediate level, a bit further up in the uh, in the organization, you would tend to hear things like, it needs to uh, interface with these other technologies we've bought. Maybe they have a forklift system, and if you're buying a new shelving system or something like that, it has to interface with that, so that has to be managed as well. Um, even further up, well, of course, the numbers have to add up. Well, sometimes you have companies buying just for the sake of promotion. Of course, that's legitimate, legitimate in itself but uh, it's more likely that they'll be looking uh, into the numbers and, and trying to see if that adds up as well. 
Uh, and procurement will usually, usually also say that <clears throat> it has to be delivered, be delivered at this time. It has to be delivered within these terms. We expect a guarantee that looks like this and this. So things like that has also, have also to be uh, considered. Um, a, a new one uh, that's uh, coming out lately is uh, the environmental issue. Uh, so a lot of uh, companies actually expect you to have some kind of an environmental sustainability a dimension to it, or maybe a social dimension to it. Of course, I, I'll have to stress that this is a very traditional way of looking at sales or at organizations or at customer needs, because some of your products obviously differ from this, uh, this basic assumption of, of an organization with a hierarchy. Sometimes you'll have one part, let's just say that's it here. Maybe this part is uh, one person or private person and this part up here is an organization that's completely separate from that person. So you still have to identify these people because they're all part of the needs you need to fulfill for your product to work out and make money. And also, uh, of course, on the board level, you tend to see a, a priority of uh, things having to be good PR, good promotional material, or good differentiation for the company. So uh, just be aware of this, that it differs from different parts of the organization, the needs. So um, the first exercise of the day is essentially uh, getting you to do just this. Uh, I see some of the groups are uh, not completely formed. Some of them aren't, well, are re represented by a single person, but uh, I'd like you to uh, just uh, think about uh, your product and maybe point out these different, uh, these different uh, persons. Just write them down on a paper and I'll give you, let's say, three minutes for that. And uh, we'll just do a, a, a quick talk on that afterwards. Thanks a lot. Well, I think that's, uh, that's probably uh, enough time. The, the idea here is that um, the idea is that uh, you need to look into this. And uh, also, there's another, there's another point to be made here. This closely relates to what I'll be talking about later in this lecture, the segments. So these customers, and I, I'm sure I've introduced this at an earlier point, these customers are bound to change segment by segment. So be aware of that as well. But uh, uh, still, I'd like to uh, hear some insights from uh, some of the groups. Anyone uh, want to share the, what they came up with? Otherwise, I'll just uh, point you out. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe did you uh, discuss some of the groups here? You're with uh, in the diabetes business, if I'm not uh, yeah. mistaken. Um, we got multiple segments that we could address. Um, some of it would be private domestic use, and some mm -hmm. of it would be uh, more institutionalized use. Uh, the approval of that one would be uh, neither the policy department or mm -hmm. the department buying for the hospital. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so something about the improvement being the, just to uh, refer, reference it to, uh, to the rest of the crowd here, the approval being uh, situated in uh, the, what did you call it, the, uh, sorry, I just, just uh, it fell out of my head. So what did uh, you call it? Might be the wholesale yeah, the wholesale apartment, apartment. yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yes, and uh, of course it goes without saying who's your, uh, who will be using your product. Um, so, anyone else? Uh, let's take uh, the group up here. Everyone centered around the table. You look really active. <laughs> so, uh, you're the, the emergency guys, right? Yeah. Uh, the people who use it would be the people uh, living and working inside tall buildings, uh, which is not fitted with the emergency escape device. Mm -hmm. And it would be uh, the same people uh, who approve it, you would say. Uh, but it wouldn't be uh, those people who purchase uh, this uh, product. Uh, that would be the, the people who uh, builds, uh, who owns the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who builds it. Um, and that would probably also be the ones who sees the nation in, the, in this product. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, I think you're right to uh, a large extent, but I think uh, the approval will definitely be with the authorities or with the building owner or with, you know, the engineer, the, the, the engineer counseling, uh, well, the, uh, the, the owner of the building, things like that. But, uh, but yes, thanks very much for that input. Let's just take one more before we proceed. So you guys, have you uh, talked about the different? 
Yeah, uh, since we are primarily selling to just like uh, private persons, uh, they have a lot of the roles in this one. Uh, but something like the golfing union would mm -hmm. also be. Interesting. And you're the just to. I'm sure the crowd knows it already. You're the guys with the wind measuring device. Yeah. Sorry. Proceed. Yeah. So, so, so basically, we don't have that many uh, interactions. It's, it's this one person that has to, to kind of have all the hats on. Sure, that's that's definitely right. But you'll have to think about okay, if you how do you want to distribute this? So if you're going to sell it in the golf store, for instance, yeah, sure. then you should have then it's probably the owner of the golf store who will actually be purchase, purchasing it from you. So the purchase decision for you is not with the end customers; it's with the guy owning the store because that'll be your distributor, or it'll, it'll even be a distributor. So the part, yeah. It could also be an idea to actually get a distributor on it because you have a large network. That's a good idea. Yeah. So you can also definitely think about uh, how to actively find a customer that uh, you could strategically use to, you know, get a bit a bigger uh, interface with with your customer and different golf clubs, things like that. So that's a good idea. So moving on. Um, it goes without saying that uh, these different organizational levels and these different customers have different needs. But it also turns out that it's not uh, necessarily easy to uh, find out these needs from, from all these levels. So what I'll do now is give you a few different ways of establishing how different, uh, what the needs are for different levels of the organization. Let's start with the top of the organization, the, the board, the management. Uh, what you uh, tend to find out here is that they, they talk a lot. <laughs> They're in the media. They do reports, annual reports. They do social responsibility reports. Well, they're just out there all the time. And if it's a, you know, if it's a, a it's a, a company on the stock exchange, they also do a lot of market uh, uh, sharing as well. So, <clears throat> on the websites, you're bound to uh, be able to found, find a lot of uh, different reports that actually describe how this level um, thinks. And that goes from saying that it goes like, uh, in the next 10 years, we want to be more active within the fields, blah, 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 or we want to provide a better working environment for our uh, suppliers, things like that. So it's all very fluffy, but that's how they think on that level. So you have, your product has to be able to address that uh, as well. Uh, the next level is sort of the, the middle level of the organization. They don't they tend to, to say all that much, so, so they're a bit harder to, uh, to get access to, but nevertheless, they're very, very important. So how do you actually find info from, from these levels of organization? What, what, what I've done in my own company is use networks. Uh, I, I wanted to have the organization Connect Denmark come and, and speak to you today, uh, do a lecture on what they do, uh, but a, a network organization like Connect essentially has well, a huge network of people sitting in these levels. So what they, they would be able to do is say, okay, you have this idea, we'll find the right people for you. And we'll have you sit down and you can discuss all the problems you're facing and they can give you inputs as to how uh, your customers on this level think. So think about that going forward. It's not necessarily something you should do within this course, but in, the, you know, in your next projects, think about how organizations like Connect Maybe also Vectus Hulstein, which is a really important place, how they can be used. So finally, we get to uh, the oper operational level. Uh, well, that's where the things are, are being done and executed, um, just down on, on the floor of the factory. Um, and here, of course, the, uh, the approaches are, are somewhat different. Um, these guys on this level tend to be more willing to participate in, for instance, user studies, interviews, things like that, because they're the ones who see the direct benefit of your product. They see it uh, helping their use of, well, or their use, um, sorry, their execution of, of everyday activities. So uh, also, well, one other thing I've come across is that they tend to uh, establish fora on the internet where you can actually go and see what they're talking about in the forum. You have these really specific like um, uh, assembly workers in the distribution industry fora, uh, where you can go and find out a lot about how they think and what they're discussing and what their everyday problems, uh, what they look like. So that's sort of the organizational approach. So the needs uh, vary, of course, from segments, as I mentioned uh, 
mentioned earlier, but also between different parts of the organization. Of course, one other thing that's very, very important uh, to remember is the fact that needs not only um, change from different parts of the organization or different parts of a context, but also over time. So what uh, the factory worker needs from the product in the morning, let's just take like a, a PDA or whatever, is overview. What he needs during the day is documentation and what he needs at the end of the day is a track record of what he's done during the day. So that, that need actually changes over the day. So you have, you'll have to be very, very much aware of that. Luckily, there are frameworks. And one of the frameworks is actually very widely used on DCU. It's called uh, the customer activity cycle. This is uh, something I've borrowed from uh, my colleague, uh, Christine, and uh, a former uh, study buddy, uh, Shin. Uh, it's called, uh, they've done a, a customer activity cycle for the company Steelcase. And what they do, they essentially um, divide uh, the activities uh, of the customer into different phases, the pre-phase, the during phase, and the post-phase. And what that enables them to do is say, okay, what different activities do we have in these different phases, and how do they, these activities interact with different parts of the product, product or different parts of organizations or external uh, persons? So think about that as well. That's a very important dimension. So. The next exercise is uh, for you to actually try to write down ways of investigating and describing the needs of your stakeholders. So I've given you the organizational, organizational approach, I've given you uh, the sort of temporal, the changes across time approach, and also a few tools for actually finding facts about what the needs are of these different customers. So it could be <coughs> to contact a sales manager uh, and get his input. Um, it could be to uh, look at the com company uh, website for, for press releases. Maybe you uh, contact a doctor to hear what uh, his experience is and uh, maybe even get contacts to uh, patients. It could also be to do a survey among your friends to figure out why they're using Facebook and what their motivation is, uh, things like that. And, uh, of course, you could do a customer activity cycle to see uh, the interactions between the sailors and the different products they're using. And I think maybe some of the groups I, I have hints of uh, why I've mentioned these particular, these particular areas. So what I want you to do is just uh, use, let's say, well, of course, this is something that you'll be spending a lot more time on, but just use um, the last uh, few minutes of this lecture uh, doing this and then at nine, I'll just give you a few messages and then we'll take a break. Okay? Cool. I think you should, uh, I think you should definitely continue that discussion on Friday. Um, um, but uh, I think it would be very hard for you to uh, come up with like a, a long list of uh, different approaches at this point. But I'd love to hear some inputs though. Uh, this group up here, have you uh, yeah. had uh, a chance to discuss some different uh, approaches? Us? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about three other guys with the, the, the Shopify or the edited web mall thing. Yeah. Uh, and we would like to make some sort of survey for, for the uses of the, the, the service at first. Uh, and then afterwards, maybe find out how we can convince the the actual clients or the web shops to be a part of our service. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. we, I think we have we need to do some interviews, do some research, check out the company website, see what this strategy is. Sounds so, very good. Yeah. Uh, the ship alarm people are back. Did you have a chance to discuss something? Seems like a good customer, doesn't it?
thinking of having some guests at least perhaps people are wondering before going on the cruise if they're taking security measures into account and choosing them Excellent. Thanks a lot. So I hope what you get from this is the fact that you can do this in a lot of different ways and you'll have to have a strategy ready for how to do it. So that's, that's, that's the main point here. Um, well, any questions at this point? Yeah? What if you can get your, uh, your group or your focus group to answer any of these questions? Then you're not uh, able to communicate the potential value to them in a proper way. Because everything you do, anything, every time you get a, someone doing a survey, things like that, you'll have to have something to give them in return. Maybe it's the promise of a really cool product or, you know, a breaking indicator that will save their children, something like that. Or maybe it's, you know, uh, I don't know, money or, uh, you know, just helping students from the DTU who are doing something really admirable. So uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, that reflects on your way of uh, your ability to motivate them. <laughs> If that's answer enough, thanks. Yeah. How do you ensure that uh, it's that not the, the wrong? If you make a survey, that the, not the wrong uh, users or users would uh, influence those who not buy it would influence. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, there are two sides to that. How do you ensure that you don't have the wrong users? Well, first of all, uh, mapping the needs will enable you to uh, actually turn your product towards that. But of course, just talking to them, you may realize that, okay, I've framed my business model, my segment wrong, and that's why I end up talking to these guys and not the, the, the guys I should be talking to. So it can go both ways, can it? So uh, what will happen after a 15 minute break at 15 past? Well, it's not a 15 minute break, is it? Uh, Tobias uh, Toft will be talking. And he's uh, talking uh, from Palo Alto in California, so it's uh, a quarter past uh, midnight uh, where he is. So uh, this is still evening for him. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for you to get some first class insights into how user studies are done. Unfortunately, uh, I've been told that we won't necessarily be able to share this presentation online afterwards. So you really need to take notes and you really need to listen up. And I hope the connection is good and that you can hear what he's saying. So uh, be back here at 15 past sharp, and then uh, we'll do Tobias' lecture. Thanks a lot.